Christian I'm living the home, hospital, jail, prison, wherever you're at. We want to say something that will help you, encourage you, and uh, the Lord can heal your body wherever you're at. And uh, I know them bringing people out of prison that wouldn't yield me. Uh, come on, Don, and let's uh, hear some good singing. Morning, everybody. be able to visit with those that have gone on before me from my family. I'll be able to sit and walk and talk 
and ask Jesus the questions that are in my heart. And I thank the good Lord that He's leading me, guiding me, and directing me each and every day as I try to do the things that will please Him and keep my family together. I give Him all the glory and all the honor. Yes. Each and every time. He's the one who helps me to sing. He's the one who I sing and uplift. And I thank Him for that. But I need you to put your hands together for this one.
Those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 14. Now we got about two weeks for Christmas, before Christmas, I guess. So we've got time for a, uh, a Christmas message later on. But in Luke chapter 14, and verse 15, And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat meat in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bagged many. Bagged many. That's about what's going on today. We almost have to bag people. And send his servant at supper time to say unto them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they that were all with one consent began to make excuses. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go see, need to go see it. I pray thee have me excused. Now why would anybody ever buy something before they see it? That was a good excuse, lady thought. And said another, I have bought five yokes of oxen, and I must go prove them. I pray thee have me excused. Who would buy oxen or horses or mules before you try them out? That was an excuse, wasn't it? And said another, I have married, and boy, this was the best, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. <laughs> I heard of a preacher one time that was called to preach, but he had to go uh, jump out the window to get away from his wife. She wouldn't let him go out the door. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, another excuse. I have married a wife, and I cannot come. And so that servant, came and showed that his Lord these things. Then he, the master of his house, being angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. There's room in our churches today, I'll tell you. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and bring and high hedges and compel them. In other words, beg them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were better shall taste of my supper. Father, I ask you to help us this morning as we expound the word of God. That it'll touch lives wherever they may be. Lord, that people will be revived, people will be under conviction, call upon the name of the Lord and make uh, preparations to meet God, repent of their sins, Lord, and their excuses. We ask you in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, this is a sad day when uh, we look around our churches and there are so many empty pews. But, you know, Jesus really predicted this day. He said, we're two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in the midst. So we need to get our mind on the absence of people, get our mind on the presence of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And uh, I know that many today are sick in body. Many are bed fastened, many are in convalescent homes that would love to be in the house of God. Okay. And you better be thank thankful that you got legs and arms and body that you can come to the house of God. Because there's many, many people would give anything that they could ever possess to be here this morning, to hear the word of God preach. Because it's so important. Jesus said, you know, when I look around, I don't see too many people in the house. I'm reminded of the words that he said. This encouraged me. He said, be of good courage. It's the Father's good place, a little flock. Little flock, yeah. be mm -hmm. of good courage. It's the Father's place to give you the kingdom. So, if I'm faithful over a few things, he said he'd make me ruler over many. And 
40 some years, well really for 50 some years I've been pastoring. And uh, so one day the upper shepherd is going to give me a reward. I believe that. Amen. And uh, I'm not uh, one that's trying to get bigger in the, in the Lord because I, I want to stay humble before God. I want to walk softly before Him because there's too many people exalted in their self today. And, and God's not looking for them super stupid, uh, super duper Christians. He's looking for the broken heart and the contract spirit. And uh, that's the ones that He comes to. Those that have no uh, salvation. Those that are bound with sin and drugs. And, and our world is so filled. I heard... Uh, uh, a doctor, uh, my wife was telling me that, that the doctor said they're going to quit giving Vicodins out in January. Good. No Amen. more Vicodins. This whole world is under Praise the Lord. And uh, it, uh, people are getting killed, they were working car wrecks and murdering and killing. And they're breaking in stores. They even broke in their Walgreens down here in uh, Midwest Road. Or, I mean, tried to break in. They broke their. Uh, God threw glass out, but they didn't get nothing. So it's happening everywhere. Troublesome times are here, filling men's heart with fear. Yes, and the freedom we all hold dear is now a state. It's time that we lift up our heads and know that our redemption brought them down. Because Jesus is coming again. Right. And He's coming without sin unto salvation to everyone that looks for Him. And we got to be looking for him. we got to be waiting for him. There was a time that people used to watch the eastern sky, the Jewish people. They used to watch the sky for the Messiah. And they give up a long time ago. But you know what? He's coming. He's coming just like he said. Yeah, right. He said, if I go away, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you will be also. He's going to prepare a place for us. Could you imagine how beautiful heaven's going to be? Yes, I know. A beautiful yeah. place. Uh, I, I think about it more often than what I used to because uh, we're getting close to that city. And uh, I think about how the streets of gold, the walls of jasper, uh, gates of pearl, how beautiful that city is going to be. No more sickness. No more pain. Come on. No more suffering. Come on. No more devil. That's right. Come on, somebody. No more sin. Yes. Praise you, God. No more murdering. No more killing the little babies and children. Drive by shooting is what's going on in the city of where we live here in Detroit, uh, right out of Detroit. But I'm telling you, friend, wicked times are here, and people make excuses. There, every church ought to be filled to the capacity yeah. today Amen. because we are living at the 11th hour, and I believe the 12th hour is coming up very shortly. The day of the Lord is at hand. It's even at the door. It's time that we wake up and realize that our redemption draweth nigh. And it really does. We are in troublesome times in America here. I don't care. I know we call it a Christian nation. And just because uh, people have said it's a Christian nation doesn't make it a Christian nation. There was a time when our fathers, forefathers came to this nation. They placed a Bible in every courtroom. And today, they made a bar out of, out of the prayer room. And uh, I, I tell you, God's going to bring judgment as sure as I'm standing here. When, when I see things that's greater than what Sodom and Gomorrah was going to, when God rained fire and brimstone up on them cities, uh, and now we're living in a day where men are marrying men, women are wearing, marrying men with women, and it's, you know what? That's worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Somebody said that God don't raise up a judgment against America. He's going to have to repent what he done to Sodom and Gomorrah. Now somebody, somebody, I know you don't want to hear this, but it's the truth anyhow. Praise God. We need to preach the truth if it heralds the devil. Amen? Amen? Preach the word. Preach the word. Be just an in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time has come, they will not endure sound doctrine. But they'll keep to themselves having teaching ears and they'll turn their ears from the truth. He said, preach the word. Make full proof of your ministry. Do the work of evangelism. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. 
That's what I'm trying to do. Preach the word. Come on. I'm not going to please man. I'm not going to please myself. I'm going to preach God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because these are sad. It's a sad commentary when you look at it. People today, you know, I, I, I think about the missionaries overseas. They don't have worse machines like we have here, and yet they have, and they don't have uh, microwave ovens, and, and yet they don't have automobiles, they ride bicycles, but yet they, they serve God. Amen. I remember some of our missionaries one time, they, they had service at night, and they went back home, and, and when they got back in their little old tent that they had, the whole congregation came. And he said, the church is over tonight. They said, how can we go to sleep? And they had their Bibles up on their breasts. How can we go to sleep when you told us we have everlasting life? How can we ever go to sleep? I'm telling you, when you get that kind of salvation, that's better than religion, folks. Everybody got some kind of religion. But religion is of man. Salvation is of the Lord. It's in the Word of God. And we need to realize that these are trying times, perilous times that we're living in. That men's hearts are failing for fear of things that's coming up on this earth. It's coming, friends. It's coming. Judgment is coming upon this world. A lot of people actually live like they're never going to die. You don't know when you may go. Amen. The end of your world might be today. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. We don't know. Definitely. And the older I get, the more I realize that God can cause in any time. Any time. It pays to be ready to meet thy God. Be prayed up, packed up, ready to go up. Because he's coming without sin unto salvation to everyone that's looking for him. Are you looking for him today? Oh, yeah. Are we making excuses of why we can't come to the house of God? You know, Jesus, there's a dinner, there's a table spread here this morning. Come and dine, the master called, come and dine. And, and, and people, you invite them, they won't come. They'll, they'll make promises, they won't come. Uh, I told my wife one day, every time I go to the hospital and I meet a, somebody in another bed, or they say, oh, I'm going to come to your church. I said, you watch and see. You'll never see them. No. You'll never see them. No. <laughs> they make excuses. But thank God for those who do come. Thank God for those who hear the gospel. The gospel is good news. Yeah. And thank God that we need to support our local churches also. You know what they're doing today? They are taking people in online and uh, send them a card that you are now a member of our church. And I heard one sister call in from another state and she asked a question. Is it all right if I send part of my tithes to you? And the sister said, it would be all right. And I thought, dear God, you call her and ask her when you get in the hospital if she'll come and see you. Yeah. It's a local pastor. Right. that needs to, The church needs to support the local church. And then if you've got anything, send it to a man if you want to. But, you know, we're living that day and time. The Bible said there'll be truth breakers, false accusers, disobedient to parents without natural affection, truth breakers. And that is the day we're living in. And we need to take inventory of ourselves and say, where we stand with God? I don't know about you, but I've got my mind made up. I'm like David. i got my foot on that solid foundation and I'm going up. Praise God. I'm leaving this world one day and you are too. If you're saved, born again by the Spirit of God, you're going to heaven. Amen. Yeah. And, I, and then I heard another question asked on television. Is the cold going to go up in the rapture? Those that are cold in the Lord. He said, they sure will. And I thought about what Jesus said in the book of Revelation. He said, I would that you be hot or cold, seeing that you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is going to heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. And you need to write that down in your little black book. Amen? Because only those who serve God those that have got their mind made up and put on that solid foundation. David said, my heart is fixed. Oh, God, I want my heart to stay fixed. Amen. Because I know he's coming without sin and the salvation to those who are looking for him. Are you ready to meet him today? I'm asking the whole world. Right now, we're reaching every nation of the world if they're listening. I'm asking you in the convalescent home, in the hospitals, 
even in prison, and those that are uh, confined to wheelchairs, and uh, God only knows what you're going through. But I'll tell you, God can give you joy. I see people in wheelchairs and some of them paralyzed from their neck down. They're happy because they know something about God. Amen. And when you know Him, you've got peace that passes all understanding. Thank God we can pillar our head at night and know if the rapture takes place, we're ready. Or if the terrorists attack, or if there's a nuclear war, we out of here. <laughs> Go to the God and the kid, you're out of here. I heard the other day where a man got saved. Next week he got killed on mobile. Well, where'd he go? To be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. Amen. I believe he went to heaven, don't you? Amen. Amen. Praise God. I don't know if somebody said, well, you know, and they're asking questions like this. I know that's a, a, a debate they're having on television anymore, talking about if the parents are saved. And, and one, I mean, if one of the parents is saved and the other one's not, and they have children, then the children are going to go into rapture uh, because they're sanctified by the believing wife. Then they asked the question, what if both parents are uh, sinners? Well, they said they ain't going to go into rapture. I don't believe that. I don't believe a little innocent child that's not knowing what uh, sin is uh, and don't know the right way has never been... Uh, big enough talk, you know, the ways of God. I believe they're going in the rapture as sure as I'm standing here. I don't care if the parents is sin, sinners. Amen. Because they, they haven't they haven't got devil devil in sin yet. Amen. Like the world has. Thank God today that we know the truth. And he said you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. I don't know about you, but I'm free indeed. Whom the Son has made free, we are free indeed. And we're heaven bound. Somebody say amen. amen. I said somebody say amen. We are heaven bound. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm a looking, I'm a looking, and I'm a watching the eastern sky. Because that's the way he's coming back. The same Jesus, not another, that you see going into the sky is going to come back in like manner. I believe he's coming back on a Chicago glory cloud. Now, we talk about the the, the excuses that people make. The ten foolish virgins. I mean, ten wise and five, ten virgins. Five wise and five foolish. The foolish had no oil in their vessel. And they're all waiting for the bridegroom. And at midnight, the bridegroom made a call. Go, you ready? Trim your light, be ready to meet him. And the Bible says the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil. Now, I believe that all represents the Spirit of God. They said, not so, unless we've got enough for ourselves. But rather, go to them and sell and buy for yourself. And while they went, the bridegroom come and the door was shut. They came back, they knocked on the door and opened unto us. And the Lord said unto them, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Now, I believe he knew them as his creation, but he didn't recognize them as part of the bridegroom. Amen. Praise the Lord. I may be wrong, but that's what my belief is. And one of these days, you're going to hear the cry of the bridegroom. He's coming. He's coming to get to church. Glory to God. People are bringing the church out of this dark sinful world. Amen. We're going to rise to meet Him in the air. The Bible says He's coming with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ is going to rise first. We which are alive and remain are going to be changed in a moment and the twinkle of an eye and put on that glorified body. Amen. We're going out of here, bless God, with a shout. Amen. I tell you, it's good news, isn't it? Isn't it good news? To, isn't it wonderful to be a Christian today? Isn't it wonderful to have the peace of God that passes all understanding? Amen. Isn't it wonderful today to know that uh, you prepare to meet God? Now, I, I got saved many, many years ago. And I was a wicked man, friend. But I, I don't want to tell you how bad I was because you wouldn't believe some things I did you. But thank God. All my sins is cast into the sea of forgetfulness. Never again to be remembered against me. They've cast it as far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered against me. And brother, I believe when he cast him into the sea of forgetfulness, he put up a sign, no fishing. Ain't nobody going to preach my sin. <laughs> Come on! 
love somebody. Yeah. Amen. Nobody's going to preach the Bible. Amen. God forgive you. For God. Hey, you know he has ability that we don't have. Right. He got the ability to forgive you and forget. That's right. Yeah. But we forgive, but sometimes we won't forget. You know, right. we well, yeah. Well, I remember what they done to me, you know. But God don't remember things like that. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Oh, he's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a long suffering God. He's patient with us. Long suffering. Amen. Slow to anger. Uh, I said a while ago, somebody wrote a song, God's going to get you for that. He can got every one of us a long time ago. Yes, but I'm glad. I'm glad he's a good God this morning. We're going to thank Amen. God and those people that listen to us. I know we're picking up people that uh, haven't, I haven't seen or heard for many years. We picked up people and they are uh, so glad to hear from us and so glad for the church service. And we're going to ask everybody out in the internet world that's in sin, in trouble, broken homes, broken families, children on drugs, alcohol, or whatever that need may be. I want you to bow your head and if you're really sincere in your heart and you really mean it, and if you really repent of your sin, I'm not talking about apologizing to God. I'm talking about repenting. Repenting means turn going another direction. A change of mind, a change of heart, and only God can do that. And uh, but if you will listen to me right now and say and repeat the sinner's prayer with me, uh, I believe with, with all my heart God will come in, take up His abode, and you'll have everlasting life, eternal life. I'll tell you, don't get no better than that, friend. Amen. Will you pray that prayer with me? I want you to bow your head wherever you're at. If you in the uh, hospital, medical condition, uh, have a medical condition, sickness in body, and we have prayer calls we're going to send to people. We give out over 400 prayer calls here in this church, and uh, we'll be glad to send you a prayer call wherever you may be. Right. So uh, we'll pray for it, and it's the anointing. There's no power in that prayer call. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke. So will you bow your heads wherever you're at? Say, Heavenly Father, Dear God in heaven, I've heard the man of God preach. I'm in sin. My home's a wreck. My marriage is on the rock. My children are disobedient. Lord, will you come into my heart? Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I'll serve you all the days of my life. I'll make up my mind right now for me and my house. We're going to be like Joshua. We're going to serve the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord right now, friends. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He that cometh to me, I'll no wise cast out. That means He'll take you in. He'll forgive you. He'll change your heart. He'll save you. He'll write your name in the book of life and give you eternal life, everlasting life. And you can go to that beautiful city in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to say that. Lord, forgive me and come into my heart and let me know that I have peace of mind now. Give me this assurance that all's well, my family. I'm going to trust you to save my family now because I'm a Christian. I'm a born-again believer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Somebody give the Lord a good hand clap. At this time, Brother Charles is going to come and we'll read some directions how to get to our church, how to ask for a prayer call from all these Praise people. the Lord, everyone out there in the internet land all over the world. If you're tuning in and you're listening to this message and you've enjoyed it and God has touched your life this morning, you need to thank God for what He's done for your life. If He saved your lost soul, you've accepted Him as your personal Savior this morning. You, you need to write us. Now, I'm going to give you three ways you can get in contact with. One, it's Trenton Church of God, 35 R O E H R I G. That's Roig, Trenton, Michigan, 48183. Trenton Church of God, 35 Roig, R O E H R I G. Trenton, Michigan, 48183. The next way is email. You can send us an email. Trenton Church of God, go to att.net. All small letters. The next way is web address is. TrentonChurchOfGod.com. Look at you can look at past sermons. 
You can leave a message on your computer and it will get it. And look at upcoming events. If you want a prayer cloth, you can contact us in these different ways. We have a young man that's got a Bible ministry going on. And if you want a Bible and you are in need, you can have one of these Bibles for free. Just come. We are asking to come and be a part of one service. Be a part of it. We will gladly give you a Bible free and put it in your hand. We ask God, we ask you to just reach out to God and call on Him and, and He'll save your lost soul if you commit if you committed any wrongdoing. If you're out there and you are saved and you have committed a sin in this time, He said you have an advocate with the Father, that's Jesus Christ. You can call upon Him and ask Him to forgive you of that sin. Yes. Now I'm not telling you, not saying that you are sinning and going around sinning, but if you do, you have an advocate with the Father. You can ask Him to forgive you, and He will surely forgive you. The last time is Trenton Church of God, 35-R-O-E-H-R-I-G, Trenton, Michigan, 48183. Your email address for us is Trenton Church of God. Go to att.net. All small letters. Web address is trentonchurchofgod.com. Look at past sermons. Look at messages and look at upcoming events. And if, if you want something for us, send us. Send us an email or contact us some way and we will surely pray for you. Amen. We will always keep you in prayer. We will lift you up every day that we pray. We will lift you up to God and pray for your every need. Yes. Pastor Burgess. Amen. Amen. We trust that the man that sent a prayer petition in to for his wife that left the church and left him, we pray that uh, they're back together. And if you uh, hear this, write and let us know the good news. God bless you until next week.